Hey, it's Dan with Staffing Mastery, and this week I want to discuss something that I think is really, really important when it comes to successful selling. And if you are a salesperson out there or a sales manager, have really been involved in the sales process at any point in your life, you understand there are these things called objections, right? And they can come at you at any time of the prospecting or sales process. And any time that the prospect feels like they need to throw you off a little bit or they need to push back or really kind of press back against you and your process, they will throw out an objection. And there's a lot of different reasons that buyers or prospects will be doing this. Uh, but the, the same result is true if you don't know how to overcome them. You create friction in the sales process or the buying process. And anytime you create that friction in that process, you reduce your chances for success. Now, we've all known those kind of hot shot salespeople out there that feel like they're just absolutely naturals and that they always rise to the occasion. And the, the, the simple truth is, is that you never rise to the occasion. You always fall to your highest level of preparation. Right. So if your salespeople are out there and they're not prepared to handle these objections in line in the sales process and reduce that friction and address them properly and appropriately for you and your company, then they're not going to have the level of success that they could have if they were to undertake this training. Now, that's the basis of it. There are some companies that are aware of this and there's some companies that, you know, over time salespeople, they, they hear objections and they figure out kind of what works to get around it. However, the best practice for this is to actually create something called an objection playbook. Now, if you've been doing staffing sales for any period of time, you know that at the root of it, there might only be a handful of objections, eight, maybe 10, a lot of different variations, you know, but at the root of it, the actual core objection itself, maybe there's like eight to 10 of them, right? But you might hear it a lot of different ways. That being said, the best in class staffing agencies that focus on having a strong, highly effective sales organization, they actually use this concept. They use the objection playbook. And what they do is every single time one of their salespeople gets an objection, they use it as a training opportunity. They'll actually say, okay, what is the objection that you got? How did you handle it? How did it work? And what is the way that we as a company should respond to this objection in the future? And they memorialize it in their playbook. And they're always updating this and giving it to salespeople and they review it and they make sure their salespeople are comfortable with responding to objections the right way. So then it creates, they use the sort of the power of habit, right? If you're familiar with the power of habit, if you've not read that book, it's amazing, but all habits are, you know, initiated by some sort of trigger, you know, something that says you get this trigger and then the habit kicks in, right? The response. Now, in this case, what you want is you want the objection that your salesperson hears to be the trigger. And you want that to trigger a natural response for your salesperson to take it. Now, I'm just going to show you an example of how to put together this objection playbook. You can actually download a copy of it here if you just want this one, or you can create your own. They're super simple, but just bear with me as I share this screen. Okay, so here, if you're just looking at a super simple PDF. Again, you can download this right here or you can create your own. Uh, there's nothing super fancy about this, but this is essentially the Staffing Mastery Objection Playbook. And in this, there's gonna be a number of pages, you know, and it's simply this, you just document what the objection is and then you write out what your response should be. And this is where you take time to be thoughtful and intentional about how your salespeople should respond considering who they are, who your industry is, and your value proposition as it moves the prospect or buyer towards the desirable outcome, okay? And again, in this template here, there's room for 10 objections for you to actually you know, build out. I actually have an example one in here just to, to kind of show you how we use this. And this is one of my favorite objections because it's actually a sneaky objection. You know, most people don't actually think about this particular one being an objection that they encounter much because you typically think of, you know, I don't use staffing agencies or I'm happy with my competitor or your price is too high. You know, those are all some of the other ones that are objections that can make their way into your, you know, your objection playbook. But 
this is also one, why should I use you? If your salesperson or if you don't have a great response for this in line to be able to answer this without being over salesy about it, then this will trip you up and you'll lose the sale. So this is like a sneaky objection that prospects and buyers use that I wanted to, to showcase with this. So why should I use you? There's a lot of different ways that you can respond to this. So I'm gonna share with you one of my favorite responses, but really this is just an example for how to do this process. You know, I would like you to, to figure out what your response would be and just use your verbiage, your language, and what makes sense for the culture of your organization. But really, you know, why should I use you? You know what? I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't. It's a great question. You know, I don't know enough about your current situation to advise you on a solution that might fit. You know, I, I would like to offer you a solution that could fit the problems that you're facing, but I just don't know enough. Could you share more about what's going on with your current staffing and recruiting challenges and maybe what a successful outcome looks like? Right? So you just teach this concept. You teach what is the response that you want to have in these situations, right? You know, now this is why I will tell you I like being prepared with this type of response because a lot of times when salespeople get this, why should I use you? They start reading off of the mental brochure and they start literally answering the question, right? Oh, the reason you should use us is because we're a local agency. We've got more local offices. We've got excellent service, the best resources, the best recruiters, the best customer service, you know, all the clients, whatever it might be. But the reality is they're just reading the bullet points off that mental brochure that, frankly, every other agency out there is saying. And if you don't differentiate yourself when it comes to answering this question, your answer is going to sound the same as everybody else. So the customer at this point is left to choose why they should use any one of the agencies that all sound the same. And at that point, they typically defer to price as being the differentiator. And if price, if low price isn't your unique value proposition, if that's not your competitive strategy in the market, then you need to get really good at being able to handle this objection with something that is a bit of a pattern interrupt. You know, why should I use you? It's a great question. I don't, I don't know. I don't know enough about you or what you're trying to achieve by outsourcing your recruiting. Could you potentially share some of the challenges you're facing with recruiting and staffing and what success looks like if I was to able, if I was going to be able to help you out, right? You basically hit them with honest, disarming honesty. You know, that's a technique. It's like, hey, I'm going to tell you something that's seemingly not in my best interest. Salespeople hate saying, I don't know. And maybe you shouldn't because those are things that are counterintuitive to pushing towards a sale. But it's honest. At this stage in the process, typically when you get this objection, it's typically early on, you know, this that's a that's an honest answer. And it's a pattern interrupt because other salespeople likely aren't responding this way when your prospect asks them the same thing, right? But then you say, hey, this is why I don't know. I've not learned enough. The reason that you're using that to justify that I don't know enough about your situation is you're basically saying, I need you to tell me more. I need more information from you, right? So you're planting the seeds or laying the framework that you need to engage in a dialogue that's going to provide more information coming from the prospect or buyer, right? You know, and then can you give me an example of the current challenges you face, right? Like, tell me what's really going on. Like, why do you need people? Like, what are the issues? And this is setting your this is setting you up for the techniques of questioning strategy that we teach, right? You're setting that up. But then, you know, you're also saying, hey, can you, you know, tell me what a successful outcome would look like, right? This is the key part of sales. If you understand the sales psychology of this, people always start the buying process with an image in their mind that leads to some sort of emotional action that leads to logical justification before they buy. So they have to see what a successful outcome looks like. They have to feel good about that outcome and the purchase that they're making emotionally. And then they need the solid bullet points to really back up the emotion and that image that they saw, right? So can you tell me what a successful outcome would look like? And then maybe I can tell you if we have a solution that would actually be able to provide that for you, right? So you're asking that question, you're setting the framework to get more information on your prospect, and you're actually starting the sales process by getting some, some you know, negative and positive imagery mixed in there to, to elicit the emotional response that, that really kind of uh, leads to the logical justification of a purchase, right? So, but this is why you teach this, that you teach this back at your office, back in the clubhouse, so your people can respond to this 
And then really a fun game that you can do if you're a manager, even a coworker, a couple salespeople out there, bounce these off each other. If you just run into somebody, just say it, pass in the hallway or on a Zoom meeting, whatever. Hey, why should I use you? And you wanna get so your response is second nature, right? And you should do that for all of your objections. Your price is too high. I'm happy with my current competitor. We only use nationals. We only use locals. You know, we only work with uh, small businesses. You know, we only work with big businesses. Whatever the objection is, you have to be prepared to handle it. And the reality is there's always going to be a different variation or a nuanced wrinkle to that sort of objection that you might hear. And when you get that, when you do your uh, post prospecting or sales reviews, you ask what objections did you hear? And that's why we keep the objection, you know, tab in every one of our prospect, you know, planners that you've seen. So you can actually write these things down. And then each one of those becomes a header like you see here. And then you work together to create that intentional deliberate response that becomes the response of your agency. And then you train, reinforce, train, reinforce, wash, rinse, repeat. And after that, you're going to have salespeople that are highly trained and know exactly how to overcome objections as they get them. And you will drastically increase your ability to close deals. So hope this has been helpful. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out. Ask me, you know, if you are a little stuck on an objection and you're curious how I would actually handle it, send it my way. And maybe I'll do another video about specifically how I would address that objection and uh, send it out. Thanks for being here. Glad to have you.